trailblazing Secretary of State and native New Yorker Colin Powell dies from COVID complications. What we're learning about his death and a look at his impact here in New York. That fall feel really settles in where we're going to dip into the 30s. It's the shape-shifting pasta company that's taking the country by storm. New York Live goes inside a local factory shaking up an Italian staple. This is News 4 Now for October 18th. I'm Adam Cooperstein. He was a son of Harlem. He grew up in the Bronx and then made history as a military leader and secretary of state. Colin Powell has died from COVID complications at age 84. Powell's family says he had been fully vaccinated and NBC News has learned he was immunocompromised and being treated at Walter Reed Medical Center for blood cancer. Powell was born in Harlem in 1937, a proud graduate of the City College of New York and he was the first African-American to serve as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Secretary of State for President George W. Bush. Powell has a huge imprint in Harlem with the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Mayor de Blasio talked about his legacy. I lost uh, a tremendous personal friend and mentor. Uh, he has been my mentor for a number of years. Uh, he always made time for me and I could always go to him with, with tough issues. He always had great, uh, great counsel. Uh, we, we will certainly miss him. I feel as if I have a hole in my heart. He opened the doors for so many others. So he's someone we're gonna miss a lot. But we're particularly gonna miss him because he showed the world what New York City is all about. Powell was so well beloved among presidents, he earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom twice. The retired four-star general was 84 years old. Former President Bill Clinton is back at home in Westchester after he was hospitalized in California for an infection. President Clinton gave a thumbs up on Sunday while leaving a Los Angeles hospital arm in arm with former First Lady Hillary Clinton. Then he flew home to Chappaqua and doctors say Clinton's fever and white blood cell count returned to normal, but he will continue to take antibiotics. A source tells NBC News, former president had a urological infection that spread to his bloodstream. On the Lower East Side, police are now searching for the man who they say stabbed a food delivery worker to death and took his e-bike. Police say the suspect you see here sat next to 51-year-old Mia Sala on a bench and engaged with him before Saturday's deadly attack. Then moments later, he just rode off on the bike. Sala's family is heartbroken. They say he came here from Bangladesh just three years ago. We're told Sala moved to the Lower East Side just a month ago because it was more convenient for making deliveries. The MTA is now investigating how a metal police barricade ended up on the subway tracks in the Bronx. Officials say a northbound D train hit it, and that's what happened when it was entering the 161st Street and River Avenue station Sunday night. That train did not derail. However, about 50 passengers had to be evacuated from the train. At least one person was hurt and taken to the hospital. Still no word on the extent of their injuries. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. After a chilly morning, one of the coolest ones we've had since the spring, we get another chance tomorrow morning. But we've got to get through the evening first. We'll have fair skies, a little breezy. We'll get some sun in before it sets, and then fair skies overnight as temperatures for most of us dip back into the 40s, adding a little bit of a chill to the air for sure. That northwest flow, which will still be in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range at times, even through the overnight, and actually even into tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon. So you'll need the jacket again by tomorrow morning. 47 for the low in the city, 43 in White Plains, 45 in Islip, 43 for the low in Belmar. The best chance to see a few spots in the 30s north and west of the city and higher elevations like Liberty and Claryville. Tomorrow afternoon will be a little warmer than today's and we're headed for the 70s this week. There's a homegrown pasta that is taking social media and New York by storm and New York Live paid a visit to the local factory, giving a new shape to an Italian classic. Who doesn't love a good New York pasta story? Solini was founded in Brooklyn in 2012 and then moved upstate a few years later. Well, we think it's so good, we drove over two hours to get here today to see how the magic happens. So you started Solini back in 2012. Why start a new pasta company? 
Well, at the time, my business partner, Steve Gonzalez, was a pasta chef, and he had the idea for a restaurant. And I was doing a graphic design and marketing at the time, but wanted to use my skills some other way. So we decided to look into making possibly starting a restaurant together. But difficulties of opening a restaurant are astronomical. But we saw a little opportunity for a wholesale pasta because we researched, and there really wasn't a New Yorker branded pasta at the time. How many different kinds of pastas do you sell now? We have 21 that we're making uh, on a regular basis that are in stock all the time. We've uh, even partnered with uh, the podcast The Sporkful and they produced a brand new pasta shave that we're making here at Spolini called Cascatelli. Today we're making the Cascatelli, so we're using a really high quality Durham semolina wheat that's just loaded into the hopper and then brought all the way up into the extrusion chambers up top. So it's still dry at this point, but then as it comes down into this area, it starts to blend with the first liquid. And then goes into a second chamber where it continues to mix more before it goes into a third chamber down there with more moisture, more water added. And that's where it's prepared to actually be extruded. So it comes out of here and then it goes in there. Right, so it's falling from the die at the top. We get loaded into this pre-dryer, then it's brought out on the trays, and then stacked up for drying. So every morning, uh, these get emptied out at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Each tray is unloaded one at a time into these large totes, and each tote can hold about 500 pounds. So here they've just loaded a new tote. The hopper then vibrates out the uh, pasta onto the different trays, which are brought up an elevator into the scale. Also have recipes on your website. Yeah, with the unique flavors and shapes, people aren't sure what uh, what's the best use of them. We just kind of give people an idea or inspiration to work from. Scott, this was super cool. I love that you make this incredible pasta in New York. Thank you for showing us around today. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. A lot of people haven't been comfortable going to the dentist during the pandemic. Sitting around with your mouth wide open, we get it. That can make you feel vulnerable in the age of COVID. But as News 4's Linda Beccaro shows us, there are big reasons to get back out there and get your teeth checked if you haven't gone in a while. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to feel a little vibration. Philip Okowski is doing a lot of catching up these days. He's never been a big fan of dentist visits and found an excuse not to go during the pandemic. They almost had to have space suits on and you had to have a space suit on. And at that point was like, what's the use of going? You know what I'm saying? Did you do anything at all? After going two years without a visit, Philip is now being treated for cavities, gum inflammation, and infection. And now next time we're gonna do this tooth with a big cavity. Gotcha. And infection is the key concern for Dr. Maria Mallon at her practice in Wilton, Connecticut. She says dental health is about more than your molars. It's not just about getting cleaning. It's getting rid of the bacteria that's in your mouth that can cause other issues. And can go to your heart, and can go to your brain. At the annual Biomarkers for Alzheimer's Disease Summit a month ago, a report cited that over 90% of Alzheimer's patients show evidence of the bacteria causing gum disease in their brains. And people with Alzheimer's who have active periodontal disease tend to have more severe disease. We've known for many years that there are links between infection, I mean, any kind of infection and bacteria, whether it's in your mouth or the rest of your body, is connected to your, through your bloodstream, Dad, through your blood, you and travels everywhere. Dr. Mallon says one reason why some people avoid a dentist is because of the cost, especially if they don't have dental insurance. She says there are financing options and recommends this in between visits. Taking care of your mouth, brushing your teeth, flossing daily, um, you can do at home. You can use uh, fluoride rinse to prevent cavities. I imagine dental health just as anything else, in other words, what you, what you eat. If you can't go every six months, Dr. Mallon suggests a visit at least once a year. In Wilton, Linda Beccaro, News 4, New York. Well, thank you so much for watching News 4 Now. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.